point, call him on the phone. If I may finish my point, is that there are leading indicators that there are leading indicators that tell me that the population is not buying the fear porn. That's my point. And the specific numbers are a separate issue. The point is that even at the heart of where most people live, which is their financial security, people are not buying the fear porn. People are buying. They're buying crap, but they're buying. You know, home sales are up. All kinds of the so-called materialistic, real-world okay. things. Uh, May I finish? Yes. Thank you. The point is that if you project from the present to the future and say, if this goes on, you will be wrong. There are game changers. There are physics game changers in our future. They're occurring now. There are created game changers being planned, and they have possibilities to go either way. I see the, the glass half full. Others may see the glass half empty. The bottom line is this current situation is not going to continue and the changes, again, are back under our control. How we respond, how we feel about it, what our belief is about where we want to go is the determining factor regardless of the controllers who are waging, and I agree with David, a desperate losing game. Final point. History, because of the physics, which is impelled by the astronomy, not by Crittenden's model, but by the actual precession, the geometric precession of the planet, goes through these nodal points. And that's what drives the yuga cycles of changing consciousness, where it rises to a golden age, descends to the Kali Yuga, and rises again. That's part of the fabric of this 3D reality. We are riding the crest of that wave, moving from the Kali Yuga into higher states of physics and consciousness. And that's why these desperate last minute efforts are, are being waged, because ultimately they know they will lose. We only have to hang on. Uh, okay, now, thank you. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate that. Jordan is, is going to be the last one here, I, I, I believe, to speak, and then we're going to wrap this up. Okay, go right ahead, Jordan. People are waking up every day, but, but that happens every day in a prison. In San Quentin, everyone wakes up in the morning and they'll wake me up, but they're still in prison. And I'm thinking that uh, too many people uh, in our country today are like last year's Christmas lights. Half of them don't work and the other half aren't that bright. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I'm just getting started. <laughs> and so, I'm seeing our, our fellow Americans flying the planes with the chemtrails. Our fellow Americans are beating up on us in the streets. I see our fellow Americans, our, our people who are from our country and our people are wearing uniforms to beat us up and to, and to make sure we're in compliance. I see a dark world coming. I see a totalitarian fascist dictatorship coming and there's nothing anyone's going to do about it because the people love it. The people have always, just as it has been said by the uh, European historian, that the people have always in every country and every age have always supported a dictator. They will always support a dictator <clears throat> until the support of that dictator becomes more burdensome than his overthrow. So I'm saying, I'm seeing from my personal viewpoint, uh, I'm seeing we are as a human civilization going into a very dark period and we may come out of it a thousand years from today, but I'm telling you, for the foreseeable future, we are in prison. We are in a fascist dictatorship that is destroying the human family. And there's nothing we're going to do about it. Nothing's going to help it. There's well, no okay. doubt in my mind okay. about it. Okay. Thank and, you, Jordan. And, and I let appreciate me, that. Let me add one more point. I am totally sure, too, 
that the age of Aquarius is not honest. I believe that the age of Pisces started about 325 AD. That would put the uh, age of Aquarius about 400 years yet in our future. So as far as I'm concerned, I think we here are going to experience a very dark world coming and I don't see, I don't see the human race rising above. The Romans didn't rise above to save their empire. The Greeks did not rise above to save the Grecian empire. The Egyptians didn't rise. No country in the world has ever rose up to save civilization. Nobody. And so why should we think we're going to rise up and do anything? Because most okay, people couldn't care less. I, I appreciate that. But I think there have been changes in consciousness that are unlike any other time. I hope so. And, and I believe the fact that we're having this discussion here is evidence of that. And the fact that we have this time travel conference this weekend is evidence that there is a change afoot. Okay? And that we can sit up here and have these disagreements and still love each other as we do. <laughs> and dearly love each other. I'm not just, this is not just lip service, okay? We I love just, each other. I right? just want to make that's note. that's what matters. Jordan, look, Jordan is one of those people who is, is, is warning you, using prophecy as a warning to turn you around, okay? It's to make you angry. It's to motivate you. So this is he. This man actually believes in humanity deep down. I've I've interviewed him, and if you question that, you must watch the Camelot interview of Jordan Maxwell. All right. Jo jo Jordan, uh, one thing: uh, Christ Christians burned Rome. David, David. So they did. It's my turn, David. I'm sorry, Jordan. God loves you. We all love you. I've, I've heard this message a lot, Jordan, and, and we hear about fear porn. You have a lot of fear, and we talk about empowering people. We want to go forward. You would live in fear. You have no power. You have anger. You have no power. You have fear. You have anger. Your chi does not move. You have zero power. The more anger you have, the less power you have. So, and the less power you have to make these changes. So, you want to listen to that, or do you want to empower yourself? Don't have fear. Don't worry about what's coming tomorrow. We have the power to change tomorrow. We've heard that over and over. I've been looking at this world for over 53 years. While most people have not studied my subject for 53 minutes. And I'm telling you, I've sat with, I have sat with presidential advisors. I've sat with scientists, physicists, I've sat with government agents, CIA people. I've for many, many years have sat and talked with very important and powerful people in my life and I am totally convinced that I'm right. That unless the human race rises up and does something for itself, there is no hope for the human race. We are a co we have a cosmic problem. We have a cosmic, it's not political. I think the whole world of mankind is in trouble. And I would add to that, that if, and the only thing I see is maybe a light, at, uh, a, a true light at the end of the tone, is if we have some sort of an intervention in mankind's affairs from on high. All right, but I, 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 I thank you, Jordan. I, I want to say, Jordan, you're the first one who knows that we've already had intervention. You yourself have had ET uh, conversations with beings from, from off-planet, visitors, various in interesting beings and his, there is no one like Jordan to tell stories in that regard believe me so he knows whereof he speaks. May I make the comment the comment having known Jordan all this time you people have no idea the amount of shit that Jordan and I have had to go through in dealing with the government. You have no idea. The courts are broken. The judges are demons. The lawyers are satanic. They ignore the law. They ignore the Constitution. They are putting a system together that is literally George Orwell's dream of a boot stamping on a human face for a thousand years. And I understand 
from a, from a political, social, both being scholars, of understanding how societies and civilizations rise and fall, exactly what he is talking about. And to address what Richard was saying, and Richard was saying as well, yes, the problems that we have right now are insurmountable with the current technology. But things change. You can't go to the moon in a boat. You have different technology that does this. They were saying 30 years ago, when the population hit 5 billion people, we'd all die. And then 6 billion all die. 7 billion all die. And as long as production keeps up with population, everything's going to be okay. But that means that we have to depoliticize technology and have technology advance under scientific means rather than being stomped by a boot of economics and et cetera, et cetera. And I just want to tell one last time travels, because I, on the one hand, I completely agree with Jordan because Jordan and I share a bond. I deal with people in prison all the time. We write bonds and things to try to help people get, get people out of prison, and I, nobody can tell you how busted this system is than somebody that has to deal with these scumbags every day. By the way, the Hebrew word for lawyer is Satan, just so you know. And, <laughs> and 10,000 attorneys at the bottom of the ocean is a good start, as far as I'm concerned. And poly means many, and a tick is a parasite, therefore politics, well, I'll leave it to you. So, and let me tell one last time travel story. This is a legitimate time travel story that may give you a little bit of hope. Back in the early 1980s, I was studying with and was very good friends with a man named Hal Wilcox. And Hal Wilcox was one of the old-time UFO contactees with George Adamski and Gabriel Green, and he appeared on the Jack Parr show, and he was a professor, a music professor at USC. And we used to do, a, a, every Monday, we used to get together at Hal's house, and everybody would do a meditation, and Hal would actually channel a commander named Faj, is, is who it was called, and pe different people would pop and actually channel this commander. Very short story. We got a message through this group. This is the early 1980s when I was just out of college, just out of USC. In the early 1980s, they said, we want you to go look for a book. And we want you to look for books by a man named Rajneesh Gurdjieff. We had no idea who this guy was. None. But for the next month, we went to Hollywood Books. We went to the Bodhi Tree when it was there. We went to all these places. Week after week, we would come back. Nobody could find the book. Nobody knew what anybody was talking about. Nobody had ever heard of this guy. I walk into the Bodhi tree, this is about six weeks later, I walk into the Bodhi tree, I talk to a girl named Julie there, I say, hey, do you ever get any books by that Gurdjieff guy? And she goes, yeah, they're right there. And there's a whole, whole big cabinet of these books by Gurdjieff. And I'm like, oh, you got them in. And she goes, those have been here for 14 years since this store opened. And I said, well, you know, I filled out a card that said I was looking for books by this guy. And she looks through the thing and goes, no, you didn't. And I said, you remember me, right? I'm hearing you like every week. She goes, I've never seen you before ever in my life. <laughs> and I got these books by Gurdjieff. Now, we all came to the class with people, their eyes were like this because everybody had the same story. We're all these books by Gurdjieff. And we're like, who is this guy and why is this important? We then did another channeling session where this entity came in and said, because you focused and dedicated yourself, because you did what we asked you to do, we were allowed to change a moment in time where a journalist took an extra step, and instead of missing a train, he caught a train. And this American journalist was then able to see a lecture by Gurdjieff, and it was this person that brought Gurdjieff to the United States, and Gurdjieff then, and once again, never read a Gurdjieff book ever in my life up to that point, and never heard of him, but it allowed Gurdjieff to then change and become part of the, I guess you would call metaphysical revolution of the 20th century. And the last story they told us, which was kind of interesting, to include on a cute, true time travel story, these entities said at one point Earth was utterly hopeless, that totalitarian regimes had taken over the entire planet, that the Spanish had colonized North America, you had the Russians, the Spanish, the Chinese, that literally there was no hope for Earth whatsoever. And that because of this, that Earth had to evolve with a group of other worlds, that there were 48 evolving worlds, that we were the slow kid on the planet, and that they had to evolve. And they were allowed at that point in time to shift and they went, and they, this is what they claim. They claim they went back in time and that a saucer simply altered the wind behind a British frigate that allowed it to T-bar on a Spanish man of war during the, battle between the, uh, during the battle between the British and the Battle of the Spanish Armada, which allowed a miracle to occur where England defeated Spain and allowed the British, with their ideas of freedom and freedom of religion and freedom of thought, to colonize America, to colonize Canada, to colonize Australia, and brought a new light and new hope to the world. And they told us, if you focus, if you keep 
that focus if you do what it is we ask you to do and keep that faith anything is possible and someday you may just walk out of this room and the whole world will be at peace and there will be trade with other planets and travel to other galaxies and it will have always been that way and you would be the only ones to know any different so there's my time travel story. thank you okay thank you thank you sean uh tommy hansen